From Learfield on the Mustang Sports Network, this is Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. Brought to you by BMW. Test drive one at your local Dallas-Fort Worth BMW centers and take advantage of exclusive offers. Credit Union of Texas. Be a part of something unexpected. CUTX.org. Experience more. The Lyle School of Engineering, offering master's programs through on-campus and distance education options. Visit lyle.smu.edu. Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue. Find your comfort zone. Also by Ruthie's Rolling Cafe, voted the best grilled cheese in Texas. Live from Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue, here is your host, Rich Phillips. Good evening and welcome to another week of Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. I am Rich Phillips, the voice of the SMU Mustangs. Happy to have you here this evening at Ozona Grill and Barn with us on 770 KAAM as well as we welcome in the head coach of the SMU Mustangs, Chad Morris. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. Doing better, I hope, than the last time we spoke. Well, I mean, I'm doing I'm doing well. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm uh, and I know we'll talk about it, but, uh, you know, hey, obviously the outcome – uh, Saturday wasn't what we were we were went up there for. Um, was very disappointing the outcome, but very proud of our players and the way our players and uh, staff responded in the second half. And uh, uh, so yes, uh, I've, I've done better. I've had better Monday night. Sure, but, uh, but I'm, it could be a whole lot worse than what it is right now. Yeah, I uh, I got to tell you, I I really didn't look forward to talking to you after the game Saturday. It was nothing personal, and it's and it's not one of the you know sometimes they're coaches or players in this business that you're afraid they're going to bite your head off or something after a bad moment. I don't believe that. I just feel bad when I have to ask you questions after that. That's tough. And, that, and, I, and you know it's part of the job for all of us. That's got to be a tough one to be a part of, too, from your side, I'm sure. Well, I mean, I don't really look, um, you know, just uh, – <clears throat> I kind of look forward to talking to you after the games, <laughs> you know. I kind of well, like good. talking with you. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you can uh, – I'm a little disappointed in you thought that you don't like talking to me after the game. Well, you know, so, just – But that's uh, – I understand. I, I, it's nothing I, personal. I, I hate it. that I have to bring up subjects. That's what That's it is. okay. Certain I understand. Subject. Completely understand. You know what? It's, uh, it's part of the game. It's part of life, too. Um, you, you, you know, you're not going to get everything that you, 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 you want in life. You're not going to get everything you want in a game. Um, mm. You know, you're going to get you're going to get a lot of times what you deserve. And um, you know, when you look back at that game, we didn't deserve to win. And um, I, I thought that we played well enough in the second half, uh, championship caliber effort, to be honest with you. But uh, we dug ourselves in such a big hole that it was so hard to get out of. Uh, but yet still had opportunity to to, uh, to to pull the game out. But, you know, again, that's part of it. And, and uh, you say what it is and, and you be honest and you, 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 uh, you know, we, we feel like that we're building this program. We feel like we're a lot better than where we've been. Uh, we're moving in the right direction. And uh, and I'll stand toe to toe with our kids and fight for our kids every day of the week. And uh, because they're fighters and um, they showed that Saturday night. If they didn't, if they didn't believe in us and they didn't believe in the culture that we built, then it would have been a 68 to 22 ball game. 34-11 at halftime was the score. Um, and I know we, you, know, you said it during the postgame that just didn't play well in any phase in the first half. Which surprised you more, the offense or the defense in the first half? I think the entire, in th the entire team. Um, that was something that was totally, totally off guard. Uh, no one saw that. Uh, the, I don't even think the players really saw that, to be honest with you. Um, because we've had such a great week of practice, you control your own destiny, you're in the lead in your conference, in your division, and, and all you got to do is just go take care of business. And, and, uh, and, and you know, and I, we talk about this all the time. Our standard at SMU is best. That, that's our standard. Our standard in our football program is best. Whatever their best is, that's what we ask for. And, and sometimes in life and, and through the day-to-day -day, uh, rigors of, of your operations that you deal with, sometimes your best just isn't good enough. And, and when those days happen... You, you pick yourself back up and you come back to work the next day or you go back to do what you do and, and you continue to give your best effort because more times than not, your best will be good enough. Uh, and that's all we ask. That's all we ask every day of our players. But I do know this, that the first half was not our best. We, we, we were far from our best in all three phases of our game. Um, and it was, it was a shame because we controlled our own destiny and we had prepared and we had had a plan and the how to and – and it was strictly you saw the want to and the will to was directly across the field on the other sidelines. And uh, 
Uh, it was as if, as I shared with our players, it was as if they're just waiting on somebody over there to make a play so they can feel good about themselves so then they can go out and play and uh, instead of creating your own energy. And we talk all the time about elite people, elite programs, elite companies. You create your own energy. And, uh, something, and, and we, we knew there was nothing about that stadium that was going to provide energy on our sidelines but us. There was nothing. There was Veterans Day. It was their backs were against the wall. It was everything was about the energy that was going to be on their sidelines. So we had to bring our own energy and the own. And I told them all week, you have to pack your want to and your will to, and you got to unpack it when you get there and bring it to the to the field. And and we were unable to do that. And um, and that's that's on me. That's on me as a head coach. That's on our staff. And uh, uh, I take full responsibility for it. And um, that's 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 just who I am. The second half, you outscore them 29 to 9. Of course, rally back to tie before the field goal at the end. Uh, again, same question about the first half. Which side of the ball surprised you more with their turnaround in the second half? Well, I, I don't think anything really surprised me because, uh, you know, just the message at halftime was look, take your eyes off the scoreboard. The scoreboard is really has no influence right now on, on what we're about and what this program's about. Because uh, if you keep looking up the scoreboard, you're going to lose focus because you can't control the outcome. There's not one play in our playbook that's going to score 23 points. It's just not going to happen. And so you got to continue. you got to play plays. And we got to just play better. And uh, I, I really, I just shared how disappointed I was, um, <clears throat> how that we've all came to this. After the 75 points that they put on us a year ago, it came down to this type of first-half performance. And just a disappointment. I mean, it, it really was kind of what it turned into. It was I was very disappointed. Um, that this was this was who we were, um, and uh, and and really challenged them to see. Hey, look, just go. Let's just go play better than we played the first half. You can't play any worse. Just go play better. And if our culture is truly as intact as we said it is, then you will you'll respond. Um, but we'll find out a lot about our team and our players and our coaches in the second half. And um, so and if if we can continue to put good plays together and good drives together and and stack good plays upon good plays upon good plays, then maybe we look up at some point in time in the game and we're eight points behind and we're in this thing. And, uh, but that was not, that was absolutely 100% not the talk at halftime was to go back and tie this game. That was the last thing we talked about. It was about just being better one play at a time than what you were the first, first half. And if, if our better was good enough, then great. If it's not, then, hey, we played better the second half and we'll regroup and, and figure out what went wrong. We'll talk some more about this game uh, as we continue on through uh, this evening. SMU back at it this Saturday, uh, 11 a.m. at Memphis. They are ranked 18th and 17th in the two polls this week, 8-1 and one on the year. 11 a.m. is the kickoff. It is on ESPN News, 1030 the pregame radio-wise over on 1310 at 96.7 FM, the ticket. Remind you that uh, every week we are here at Ozona Grill and Bar from 7 to 8 on Monday nights. You can ask questions of the coach later in the show. You can do it throughout the week by hitting the Ask the Coach button at smumustangs.com. You can submit questions on Twitter with a hashtag of Tempo Talk or be at Ozona Grill and Bar on Monday nights from 7 to 8, and you can submit it with our staff here on site, and we'll ask those questions of the coach coming up later. But uh, we'll get into some more of those first half of issues of the game and uh, about whether or not teams can have another team's number. That's coming up next here on Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. The best road is the road home. Start yours at the BMW Road Home sales event with a holiday credit of up to $3,000 on select new models. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Up to $3,000 credit is applied against MSRP of final purchase, not tax, title, destination, or handling charges. Must take delivery by November 30th. Credit allowance varies by model. $3,000 credit is for 2017 X5 and 2017 3 Series. Please see your client advisor for details. Test drive at one of your local Dallas-Fort Worth BMW centers and take advantage of exclusive offers. With over 7,000 athletes in the greater Dallas area, Special Olympics Texas is dedicated to providing programming for children and adults with intellectual disabilities. By offering year-round training and athletic competition in a variety of Olympic-style sports, the athletes get a chance to develop physical fitness, build friendships, and experience the thrill of friendly competition. SMU Athletics is a proud collegiate partner of Special Olympics Texas. For more information about registering an athlete or signing up to coach or volunteer, visit SOTX.org or call 800-876-5646. 
It's finally time for some Mustangs football, y'all. And Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue has the perfect spot in the best patio in town. So head over to Ozona and yell at the TVs while enjoying some great West Texas favorites and drinking some ice cold drinks. And don't forget about happy hour from 4 to 7 Sunday through Friday with a dollar off all bar drinks and complimentary chips and salsa. Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue. Look them up on ozonagrill.com. Go SMU. If you experience hip or knee pain, I know what you're thinking. Ooh. And basically, you have two choices. You can wait until the, gah, gets so bad you can't stand it. Or you can take the first step to living without, aha, right now at yourjointhealth.com. An online hip and knee assessment from the health system more people choose for joint health in North Texas. Texas Health. Ah. Visit yourjointhealth.com today. When it comes to your signage needs, trust the experts at Fast Signs North Central. With more than 50 years of knowledge, Fast Signs North Central will help provide you with a true turnkey experience. From branding and design work to complete production and installation, let Fast Signs North Central make your vision a reality by calling 214-890-4444 or find them online at fastsigns.com backslash 11. Fast Signs North Central. More than fast, more than signs. Ruthie's Rolling Cafe, serving up the best grilled cheese in Texas. For four years in a row, Ruthie's has been voted the best food truck of SMU and Park Cities. Ruthie's is a crowd favorite among the ponies. You can find the food trucks rolling on SMU campus, SMU home games, and you can find them regularly at Clyde Warren Park. To book Ruthie's for a private party, visit their site at ruthiesfoodtrucks.com. Because after all, there ain't no party like a grilled cheese party. So, seize the cheese. Make a toss left, coming right, and Cedric Lancaster makes a <laughs> huge tackle in the open field at the 29 to come up with the stop they needed. That was the fourth down stop. They got SMU the ball back to go down for the game-tying touchdown on Saturday afternoon, although, of course, it ends up in a loss to Navy, 43-40 uh, to 40 on a last-second field goal. I am Rich Phillips with SMU head coach Chad Morris here every Monday night for Tempo Talk at Ozona Grill and Bar. We... Uh, Thank everyone who's come out tonight. We're brought to you in part by LG and Nebraska Furniture Mart. Do game day right this football season with LG's game-changing home appliances. Receive up to $150 off on select LG laundry bundles now available at your local Nebraska Furniture Mart. Uh, we talked a little bit about it in the first segment. It was 34-11 to 11 was the halftime score. Uh, first off, of course, going into that game, there were a lot of questions about what Navy was doing at quarterback. Did you guys have any idea who they were going to roll out there to start the game? Well, we had a really good idea mm-hmm. that, uh, that that they were going to take and move a, uh, what, 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 their best running back. Yeah, Malcolm Slot Perry. Back, yeah, and move him into the quarterback role. They had, they had kind of alluded all week long that they were looking and searching for, you know, a quarterback and someone to kind of get them back to Navy football. So we had a really good idea. Uh, that that was going to happen, and it would, and, and if that did happen, it would be more of a quarterback design run game, and so yes, we, we it wasn't something that caught us off guard by no means. What kind of problems did he pose for you? Because obviously, off the edge, he was uh, extremely dangerous all day with four touchdowns. Yeah, I, I think just you know his elusiveness, um, his ability to when you you know when you overrun, you, you, you always design a dive quarterback and, and pitch guy. And, Sometimes you, you you know you pursuit angles and you take angles to which you, you're trying to stop the quarterback and 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 still go pl- you know play alley to pitch and um, you know a guy of that that of that athleticism can can cut back on you. I think he did that a few times on us, uh, especially on the 92 yard uh, mm-hmm. run. The one play 92 yard run was we overran the play and and again you had to have perfect angles and uh, you know in the past that you know that, the uh, the other quarterback Abby. Uh, Zach Abbey had been more of a true in between the tackles downhill runner, more of a powerful runner, not nearly getting so much to the outside. But, but again, all that we 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 kind of had a, a really good idea that that was going to happen. And uh, again, a lot of things just didn't go good in the first half. It, it was uh, when you had five possessions in the second half and and you give up nine points. That that was the way you you had hoped to start the game. Um, but uh, from a defensive standpoint, but we did not. We didn't play well. I think a couple things. Our back was against the wall. I think they had been searching offensively uh, for the right mixture and just any momentum at all. And uh, they take the opening drive. I, you know, of all the coin tosses for us to lose, that was the one. <laughs> we were going to take the ball and try to go down and score first. But uh, they won the toss. And, 
you knew right then when they, they selected to take the ball that they had to try to create some momentum that they had been struggling. And uh, they go down and score. And then they get the ball back after we make a field goal and uh, gave them a little bit of motivation there when they stopped us. Um, and then they, get, and they go right back down eight plays and score. And at that point, all, all the concerns, all the problems of Navy offensive football were solved. Mm -hmm. And so you saw a lot of confidence and a lot of motivation on their sidelines. At the fullback uh, up the middle, too, was uh, big for them on Saturday afternoon. You concerned with the way your defense is able to handle things up the middle like that? I thought between the tackles, um, I, I thought they did a – Navy did a, a, uh, a job of handling us up front. Um, I really do. Um, I, you know, that they knocked us off the ball. Um, now, I think some guys on the edge, our defensive ends on the edge, played, uh, played fairly decent. There were times that we uh, – we let the tackles climb up on our backers and, and get to our backers. Uh, and you're supposed to, you know, a lot of our calls are to get those, keep those guys off, keep, their, uh, keep them off the, the linebackers. And, um, and we didn't do that at, at, on occasions. And, again, linebackers just being a little too wide, getting boxed out of a, a, a cutback lane. And especially on the last drive of the game, they go 29 and 22 yards mm -hmm. on those. And, uh, um, you know, we had some we had some guys that had came out. Anthony Roan had gotten a concussion and, and came out, so we had moved some guys around. But uh, uh, we had two true freshmen in there at linebacker. It's still no excuse. Uh, you got 85 scholarships and guys that got to got to step up and play in those kind those times. But uh, uh, you got to give them credit as well. They they there was times, uh, especially in that first half, that it was just um, they they wanted it. They wanted it more than we did at at, at that point. Offense didn't seem to have a lot of rhythm either for uh, your offense in the first half. Who, what do you think contributed to that? No, not not for a top ten offense in all of college football. I, I thought we played really poor the first half, to be honest with you. Uh, I didn't think we could get anything going in the run game. And, and I know at this level you've got to be able to run the football. Um, we weren't consistent in running the ball. Uh, we, we missed on some throws that, uh, um, and thought that they got some pressure on Ben with, with some four-man pressures. Um, even though you do go down and score, uh, you, you, uh, or you go down and get a field goal on the opening drive, your second drive, you go down and then you miss a field goal. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had Trey Quinn open on a, on a third down. We rolled to the left and just didn't, didn't get the ball there. Um, and, uh, and, and then we wind up missing a field goal. And, and you know, when, when you're trading touchdowns for field goals, it's, it, it, and I say it every week, that those things can't happen. You can't leave, you can't leave points out on the field. And then when we do offensively, generate some some uh momentum and go down and score then we missed the extra point and, right. and so it just it was it was one of those times there that you just you, nothing was going right in the first half and uh and then and then the caps it off on the fourth down when they run the reverse and we we you know we're, we got the guy we, we missed two tackles on it and the guy goes down inside the one and then they go up uh, 35 to 11 and those things matter um if you could hold them to a field goal right there at that point uh, who knows? Who knows how that game's going to come out? I mean, no one can, can tell at that point. But, you you know, the great thing about it is our guys continue to play and continue to fight. Hey, you mentioned the missed kicks. You changed to Kevin Robledo later in the game, kicking extra points. What are you going to do this week? Have you decided yet? Yeah, you know, Kevin's going to do some more kicking this week. And, uh, you know, obviously we haven't given up on Josh. Josh is a, a great young man, has done a lot of great things for us. And, uh, but, uh, you know, we got to do some things to create some sparks. And, uh, um, you know, it, it's, just, it's, it's just like every other position. There's a lot of competition. Josh will still get some kicks in this week. But, uh, you know, those are some things that we've we, – we, you know, you, you get, you got to have those things and you got to hit those extra points. And, uh, uh, you know, protection was well. It, it, you know, I give our guys credit there. There was some really good protection on those kicks. All right, enough of the bad stuff. Let's talk about the second half here. The good stuff, we're going to get into that. And uh, the big turnaround, including one player in particular who came up huge a couple of times. And we're going to do that next here on Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. It's finally time for some Mustangs football, y'all. And Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue has the perfect spot in the best patio in town. So head over to Ozona and yell at the TVs while enjoying some great West Texas favorites and drinking some ice cold drinks. And don't forget about happy hour from 4 to 7 Sunday through Friday with a dollar off all bar drinks and complimentary chips and salsa. Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue. Look them up on ozonagrill.com. Go SMU! 
Hey, Mustang fans! Football season is just around the corner, and that means it's time to start planning your boulevard. And we want to help make it easy and hassle-free. Beginning this season, our team at Block Party will be offering full turnkey service with premium reserve space, top-quality tents, lounge furniture, and bellhop services to Mustang fans who are looking for a better game day experience. All you need to do is show up, and we'll handle the rest. For more information and to book a hassle-free boulevard, please visit our website at blockpartypresents.com. Business is a game, and if you want to win, you have to be faster, smarter, and more focused than the competition. Which is why SMU Cox offers the Fast Track One Year MBA, designed to launch your career in just 12 months. Learn from world class faculty, study with driven peers, and connect to a global alumni network spanning 80 countries. The Fast Track One Year MBA, a major career highlight, only from SMU Cox. More online at coxgrad.com. If you're experiencing enlarged monthly auto payments, Credit Union of Texas may have the cure for you. Let one of our loan experts do a free rate checkup on your current loan to see where we might be able to save you money. With rates as low as 1.69% APR, we think we'll have you feeling some relief in no time. Visit cutx.org today to find out more. Warning, refinancing your auto loan at Credit Union of Texas may cause an increased feeling of excitement due to lower auto payments. If the joy you feel saving money lasts more than two hours, please tell a friend so they can experience the CUTX difference. APR equals annual percentage rate and is subject to credit approval. Membership required, federally insured by NCUA. Every Saturday, football fans flock to stadiums around the country to cheer on their teams. Chances are, the next person your business needs to hire is in the stand somewhere. But how do you find them? Here's the smartest way. Go to ZipRecruiter. One click post your job to over 100 job boards and ZipRecruiter identifies relevant candidates fast. 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within 24 hours. Choose the smartest way to hire. ZipRecruiter, leading job site of college sports fans everywhere. For your free trial, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash football. ESPN's Neil Everett here. This college football season, Nissan's putting you in the driver's seat. Go to NissanHeismanHouse.com. Build a customized Titan wrapped in your school's colors. Then register for a chance to win it. Enter the Nissan Heisman House sweepstakes. Take on today. Get to Nissan, proud partner of the SMU Mustangs. <laughs> No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited. Ends 12 8 17. Open to residents of USDC 18 and older. Official rules at nissanusa.com backslash Heisman House Sweepstakes. Sponsored by Nissan North America. Play action. Hicks looking, throwing. Left side. Sutton. Touchdown! <laughs> Cortland Sutton down the left side. Mustangs with a chance to tie. That Woo! was the touchdown pass from Ben Hicks to Cortland Sutton. Fourth one of the day for Ben Hicks. The two-point conversion would tie things up for SMU and Navy on a Saturday afternoon. This is Tempo Talk with Chad Morris, brought to you in part by Zip Recruiter. Find qualified candidates quickly and easily with Zip Recruiter, the leading job site of Mustang fans everywhere. For a free trial, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash SMU. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash SMU. So let's talk about that uh, second half now because it was certainly – uh, much more enjoyable for all of us, I do believe. Uh, the uh, comeback with the uh, 29 second half points, get it tied at 40 uh, late in the game with three and a half minutes to play. Did you see that coming? Did you feel, I know you said you didn't talk about get it back here tied at halftime, but did you believe that that was what was you were about to witness out there for the next 30 minutes? Well, I, you know what, I I'd pretty much put the outcome totally, totally out of the picture. Uh, I was more focused about could we could we put string a series of, of plays together of our style of football, what we're about, what we've been about, and um, so you know at, at the at, at the end result of the scores, you know I I don't know if I you know it, we would have looked up and said hey look Art we got a chance to tie this thing up, but it was more about you know just a just a personal challenge. Uh, of putting just stringing plays together and if it was good enough then great but uh, I did know this and, and and it does not surprise me one bit that our players did respond they have responded every time we've asked them to and uh, so I knew that they were going to respond uh, and, and respond in a positive way uh, what do you think was the key that got things going for you in the second half? Was there there's something that you felt was the little boost that your guys needed? Yeah I really do I, I think there was a couple of things but the, the the first thing I thought was was the opening drive of the second half. Uh, I thought that was as critical a drive as that we had, um, you know, because I, I think that if we would have went three and out and punted the football to them, then then uh, I, I don't I don't know if the outcome uh, of, of at least making it a game like we did to come back and tie it would have ever happened. 
Uh, so I think that, that that drive really meant a lot. I think it, it uh, sparked a lot. Uh, again, it, it, they know the disappointment that, that I had in them, um, the disappointment that they had in themselves, uh, and how they let each other down. And um, I think that when they saw that, okay, we just came and came out and scored, now defense, let's go. And, uh, and then all of a sudden the defense comes out there and goes three and out. And, and here we go. Now we're believing. And, but it's just a shame that it took – you know, somebody else, they were just kind of waiting on Cortland Sutton or Trey Quinn or Ben Hicks or somebody. Um, you know, I'd say Jordan White, but they didn't throw the football. They were waiting on somebody to make a play so they could feel good to create a spark that, that they want to go out and play. And, and it's just – it's so much not who we have been, uh, but it was so much about the, the circumstance in that game that that's what caused the whole thing to start rolling again. Ben Hicks uh, throws for 261 yards, four touchdowns, runs the ball again fairly well, although I'm sure you'd like to see him slide sometimes, don't you? Well, you would. Um, <laughs> That's a big, big shot he took yeah, on the arm on he, that one he targeting. Did. He did, and uh, but just a fierce competitor. Yeah. I mean, he really is. And uh, we had uh, actually at halftime, I'd even told uh, DJ and both DJ and Rafe to go ahead and make sure you get as warm and, and stay loose as much as you can. And um because we were just looking for any spark anything we could get going but you know he's such a he's such a fierce competitor we've seen Ben just grow and mature uh through the course of this season and uh he's scrappy he's he's tough um I mean you you, you can you can use all kinds of, of words to describe what he stands for and uh, uh he's a winner uh that's what he is and and uh and he battles through so many so many tough times and tough things and uh uh, gave us the best chance to, to, to make that thing happen Saturday night. Do you have to fight his emotion a little bit sometimes? He gets upset out there a lot, I know. Well, he's such a fierce competitor. That's his biggest attribute. He's also at times his biggest deficit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, things that we've really worked on is body language. and and uh, But he's just a fierce competitor. And, and you know, you know Ben, and when he comes over the sidelines after taking the big hit and, and getting up and uh, – um, you know, he's, he's, he's pretty vocal. He's pretty vocal about how he feels. And uh, when you ask him how he feels, he's going to tell you straight up how he feels. And, uh, but that's what you love about him. Defensively, you guys did come up with some stands. And one guy who uh, really stood out in the second half is a guy that we don't talk about a whole lot because, frankly, he hadn't been able to play a whole lot. He got injured, I think, what was the first game of the season this year, but has come back and played some at corner. But Cedric Lancaster had the – of course, the stop on the fourth down that got the ball back to go down for the game-tying score. Uh, I think it was another third down stop that he had in the second half. And, man, when, you're, when the defense was struggling to make stops on the edge in the second half, it seemed like Cedric was there to make several big plays. You know, a fifth-year senior yeah. and uh, has started here his career as a wide receiver. He did. Uh, has been injured most of his career here. Um, you know, served with the elbow injury. But just a, just a guy that you just love being around. I mean, you love to see success – uh, come from a guy that has gone through so much and still kept his faith and still fought and, and, and who we really are about him just believing in our culture. And uh, to see him have the success that he had uh, and has had uh, is really special. And, and I'm really proud of him and, and proud of him sticking with it because it could have been so easy after he hurt his Achilles a year ago, over a year ago, to just say, you know what, Coach, I'm going to give my career up. And uh, But that's not who said is. And uh, – we're proud of him and, and proud of, of his leadership because these guys really respect him. And uh, he did. He made several stops. You know, you had five offensive drives in the second halves, and you had five defensive drives. And, uh, and, and to kind of parlay that, what was it in the first half? You had eight offensive drives we did. Actually, seven if you count the last play of, of Braden right before half would, would have made it eight. But seven true offensive drives in the first half, and, and they had – eight uh, defensive drives. So uh, basically their offense was on the field eight different possessions. And um, and in the second half to hold them to five and five. And, um, you know, offensively you were, you were perfect all but one drive. And, the, you know, you dug yourself in such a big hole you were going to have to almost play perfect football to get out of it. And uh, we were unable to convert off of a fourth down stop. There was two turnovers on downs and, and a punt in that second half. Uh, from our defense holding, and then we gave up a touchdown and a field goal. That's the way the whole thing ended. But, uh, but our inability to offensively to, to, to turn turnovers um, or punts into points uh, were, were, were critical. You know, they, we, we caused two, two turnovers, one interception and one fumble, 
and we got zero points out of it. Um, this is the second week in a row that we've given the ball up and not only would have scored a touchdown, but then the very next play they go score. So right. that's a 14-point swing. And this two weeks in a row that's happened. And that those things are tough and hard to overcome. Um, but – one thing we've done a really good job of this year is turning turnovers that the defense creates into points, and we did not do that Saturday night. How'd your guys come back from it uh, yesterday? Uh, well, it was it. We had a great team meeting. Um, you know, we we really we really had a lot of open open discussion uh, in in our class meetings. Um, we have individual class meetings before we have a big team meeting, and just really to talk about why. You know, wh what is it? And and. You know, so much of football is, is about mental toughness and not so much on the field. It's the mental toughness of the grind of the season. And, uh, and, and just, you know, sometimes when you get into that grind of the season, you have a tendency to overlook some of the small things that maybe you didn't overlook early in the year. And so we talked a lot about those things. You know, why? What, what caused us in each of the last several weeks not to play very well in the first half? Because uh, this isn't just something that came out the, the – you know, this past week. This is something that started at Cincinnati and Tulsa and a little bit at Central Florida and really last week. And, um, you know, in the past, in years past, we played really good in the first half and hadn't been able to finish strong. Right. And, uh, and so it's just a balance. And, and really, you know, you, you've got a team that's learning how to win and a program that we're continuing to build and continue to grow. And I think this is, this is again, part of the learning process that you go through with, with building a program. This is Tempo Talk with Chad Morris every Monday night from 7 to 8 here at Ozona Grill and Bar, although next week is going to be our last one because it is the last game of the regular season. Next Saturday, SMU will host Tulane on November 25th. It is an 11 a.m. kickoff. It is also Super Senior Saturday. Going to honor the seniors that day, and also all kids 12 and under will be admitted free for SMU and Tulane. Again, that's next Saturday with an 11 a.m. kick at Gerald J. Ford Stadium. This Saturday, it's an 11 a.m. kick from Memphis. We'll talk about the Tigers here in a few moments, but we'll have our Ask the Coach segment coming up next here on Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. The patients have spoken. Texas Institute for Surgery has one of the highest ratings when it comes to patient satisfaction. Texas Institute for Surgery is a state-of-the-art physician-partnered acute care hospital that specializes in treating sports medicine, orthopedics, joint replacement, spine, and pain management, among many other clinical services. Texas Institute for Surgery, the first choice for care by physicians and patients. For more information, go to TexasInstituteForSurgery.com. Texas Institute for Surgery is a physician-owned hospital. Tired of searching online for custom catering companies? Looking for someone who can craft a special menu for your event? Look no further. The Festive Kitchen has it all. From on-site lunches and drop-off catering to daily handcrafted food for your employees, let the experts at the Festive Kitchen design a game plan for all of your catering needs. The Festive Kitchen also offers daily food shop specials, weekly entrees, and seasonal food shop menus. Find us at thefestivekitchen.com. That's thefestivekitchen.com. Looking for a new place to bank? At Credit Union of Texas, we're resetting the standard in the financial industry. I look forward to going to Credit Union of Texas because I know it will be a happy and relaxing experience. Credit Union of Texas is a valuable part of my financial life. Moving to Florida this month had me reviewing whether to keep my accounts here in Texas or move them to Florida. Because of the great technology options, I'm able to continue my relationship with CUTX without moving my accounts and starting over. Visit CUTX.org for more. Federally insured by NCUA. College football programs know the importance of recruiting. Finding the nation's top talent is essential to their team's success. The same is true for business. And you can find the best talent for your business with ZipRecruiter. One click posts your job to over 100 job boards and ZipRecruiter identifies relevant candidates fast. 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within 24 hours. Choose the smartest way to hire. ZipRecruiter, preferred job site of college sports fans everywhere. For your free trial, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash football. Ruthie's Rolling Cafe, serving up the best grilled cheese in Texas. For four years in a row, Ruthie's has been voted the best food truck of SMU and Park Cities. Ruthie's is a crowd favorite among the ponies. You can find the food trucks rolling on SMU campus, SMU home games, and you can find them regularly at Clyde Warren Park. To book Ruthie's for a private party, visit their site at ruthiesfoodtrucks.com. Because after all, there ain't no party like a grilled cheese party. So, seize the cheese. Wouldn't it be great to go to the game without the hassle of traffic and finding parking? You can when you use Wind Transportation. It's what the Mustangs do. 
GoWin.com is where you can book a ride for two to 200 or more. Win offers sedans, SUVs, limos, minibuses, and motor coaches, and will make sure getting to and from the game is as enjoyable for you as the game itself. Your time and your experience is our passion. So visit GoWin.com to book. That's G O W Y N N E.com. Welcome back to Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. I'm Rich Phillips with the head coach of the SCB Mustangs every Monday night from 7 to 8 at Ozona Grill and Bar. It's on Greenville Avenue, just across Central Expressway from the SMU campus. Come out and see us next week for our final edition of the show. And also, be sure you're back in January. I believe it starts on Monday, January 8th, is when we will have the fast track with Tim Jankovic start back up. We'll talk SMU basketball, the Mustangs men's team, of course, off to a 2 and 0 start this past weekend. They'll be at home Wednesday night at 7 o'clock to play Northwestern State. Right now it's time for our Ask the Coach segment that's brought to you every week by SMU's Lyle School of Engineering, offering master's programs through on-campus and distance education options with tuition and reductions available for military personnel across the globe. Check it out at lyle.smu.edu. A question uh, from the audience here tonight, Coach. I know you guys script plays to start games, right? Uh Uh-huh. Do you script any for the start of the second half is the question that was asked here. Yeah, we do. We actually do. We'll come in and kind of gather up what we felt like was really good and some things that we probably could have ran a little bit more of, and then we kind of put a – Series of four or five, just to kind of get some get you kicked off and get you going, and then uh, and then how it flows from there. You get on to your third down. If you if you go to third down, you get on your third down chart. But yeah, we always try to get five to six in there that you try to stay with. You script them at halftime though. Yeah, that's not something you come to the game no, with. No. Uh-uh. How no. much do you script for the game for the start of the game? We always script the first nine plays. And that's always kind of just uh, what we've done and have done for many, many years. And why nine? I, I don't know. It, we just script the first nine. And uh, that's just kind of the number we've kind of kind of started with. And uh, but, it, but there are a lot of factors that are involved. Obviously, you get off script if you have a third down. Um, and sometimes you script what we call a blind call. Uh, so you may go first down, second down, and that third call is a blind call. So regardless of down and distance and coverage or front, you'll stay with that call. Is there any uh, – how do you determine those nine plays? Is it what's worked best at practice that week? It's what you think will work best against who you're playing? Yeah, you know, some of it comes down to what do you want to – what do you want to give the defense? What do you want to see out of their defense in those first nine plays? Is it nine different formations? Is it unbalanced? Is it uh, – uh, five wides to see how that they're going to adjust and see if they can show their hands so you can start your plan for the next series. Uh, question uh, online here this evening. How do you build off the momentum of the second half despite the uh, eventual outcome of the game on Saturday? Well, I think, you you know, our players see that. They, they see that that's championship caliber effort. That, that's what you're after. That's what we've, we've uh, talked about, what we've trained for. Uh, and, and I think it's really, really easy for everybody to see that. It's uh, – now, what does it take to get us into that, that, that state of mind and that, 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 that state of performance that's going to start us that way? Um, and so, yeah, I think it starts last night, to be honest with you. Uh, I think it starts as you loaded the plane Sunday, uh, Saturday night. Um, there was a lot of hurt, uh, a lot of um, um, disappointment in our players and our staff, um, and it carried into to last night in our team meeting. Now, once we got out on the field last night, that was behind us. It's the uh, rearview mirror and, uh, and, the, and the windshield theory. I mean, you can only control what's in front of you, and uh, you learn from what's behind you now. And so that's kind of the, the message that we, we kind of push forward and put uh, the Navy game behind us, and now we got to go to work, and we got a tough team that we're about to play. In film, they got to watch all of it, though, right? Yeah, you know, we try to pick and choose. It depends on the time, that uh, how long that I talk in a team meeting is a lot of it uh, because we're usually on the field about 7.30. So if I talk for an extended period of time, then their time is condensed, and so they'll have their cut-ups of what they want to show. Um, and, but most of the guys really, to be honest with you, I would say 95 to 98% of our guys have already watched the film on their own. Um, those that don't watch the film that played a bunch are usually the guys that, that, that they'll, they'll wind up getting beat out before it's all over with anyways mm-hmm. um, because, they, it, you know, the, the – you know, you, you would like to know a guy walks in and goes, man, I've just – I had to go watch it myself. And now, Coach, I'm ready. I see what you're saying. Now let's go – let's talk about it. But, you know, sometimes you do get guys that will walk in and go, I, you know, I haven't seen it. And you're like, well, why haven't you seen it? You, you've had just as much time to watch as everybody else. 
So is it you either don't care or, you, or, or what? So we got to figure out that, you know, you, you can't watch it or you won't watch it. So what is it? And, uh, and so then it comes down to a whole other issue. And we, we don't have that. We don't, we don't have that many guys like that at all, if I, any. And is that a learning process, too, just of not only to watch film, but how to watch film and what they're looking for in film? Because I don't know how much guys do that at the high school level these days still. Yeah, I mean, it's two types of film study. I mean, one, when you're watching yourself, and two, when you're watching your opponent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think when you're watching your opponent, you, you don't get caught up in watching the ball. It's kind of like watching a, a Monday night football game. I mean, you, you – I never watch the ball. You always pick a position and you're watching and use it, whether it's offensive line and you can tell what the play is going to be. Uh, and so learning how to watch your opponent is huge and, and watch who you're going against and the stances. If you're, a, if you're a wide receiver, you're watching the DB stances and, you know, what's his first step? Does he shoot his hands? Does he keep, keep his hands out in front of him? You know, all different types of techniques that are out there um, as opposed to watching what the play was. Uh, and then the next thing is, is when you watch film of yourself, you are watching yourself mm -hmm. and your performance at that point. That's the harder one to watch, probably. Well, it depends on the <laughs> outcome of the game. I, I guess, guess so. <laughs> yeah. You throw four touchdown passes, things look a little better to you at least sometimes. Uh, one last question on the uh, Ask the Coach segment with 11 a.m. games. We've got 11 a.m. start time the next two weeks against Memphis and Tulane. Do you change up your coaches' meetings, your curfews, and things like that for your team? Yeah, obviously we do everything on Friday uh, before we leave the stadium. And so we'll have a early rise Friday morning and, and um, we'll have our meetings. We'll go through a practice um, and then we'll, we'll have a team meeting, load the bus, get to Memphis, and then we'll do something Friday night when we get up there. We'll have another quick team meeting at some point. Uh, and then it's a 7 a.m. pregame meal and it's 11 o'clock kick. And, and, and our, our mentality and our – uh, thought process is good. I mean, hey, most of the country may be asleep at A&M on a Saturday morning. We're going to be playing football, and we're going to be out there uh, uh, in presence, and if we're going to be out there, if it's worthy of our time, it better be worthy of our best time. You and I are old enough that 11 a.m. is late in the day by now. What do your players think of 11 a.m.? I really could care less what they think <laughs> of 11 a.m. <laughs> I've got a little bit of edge about myself, and, and, and they, they will be ready at 11 a.m. I, I know that, and, and I don't ask their opinion of what they think of 11 a.m. Well, Coach and I, well, I know we both like 11 a.m., so we're big fans of that. It is 11 a.m. this Saturday at Memphis and 11 a.m. next Saturday at home against Tulane for SMU's regular season finale. And speaking of the Memphis Tigers, we're going to meet the enemy coming up next year on Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. While you're enjoying SMU football, More Disposal and Recycling Services is busy managing your trash. We do the dirty work so you don't have to. More Disposal offers complete waste management, from equipment purchases and installation to service and maintenance, all completed in-house. No job is too big or too small. We also offer Paper Retriever, a free paper recycling program for schools and churches. Call 214-357-HELP and let's talk trash. That's 214-357-HELP. Family owned and operated by SMU alumni, More Disposal supports SMU football. Pony up! When it comes to your signage needs, trust the experts at Fast Signs North Central. With more than 50 years of knowledge, Fast Signs North Central will help provide you with a true turnkey experience. From branding and design work to complete production and installation, let Fast Signs North Central make your vision a reality by calling 214-890-4444 or find them online at fastsigns.com backslash 11. Fast Signs North Central. More than fast, more than signs. Highland Park, Preston Hollow, and Lakewood Emergency Rooms, the official freestanding ER of SMU, and your neighborhood no-wait ER. With three facilities conveniently located near you, we're able to provide the Dallas area with upscale, quality care for all your emergency needs, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Visit HighlandParkER.com for more information. Highland Park, Preston Hollow, and Lakewood Emergency Rooms. Pony up. Are you serving or have served our country? SMU's Lyle School of Engineering offers master's programs and tuition reductions for military personnel across the globe. For veterans and those in the uniformed services of the U.S., our distance education programs provide a way to help engineer our nation's future. It's just one way SMU is saying thank you to those who protect and serve our country. Check it out at lyle.smu.edu. 
Maggiano's Little Italy specializes in serving lavish portions of authentic Italian-American cuisine made in their scratch kitchen. Offering homemade pastas, signature salads, prime steaks, fresh fish, memorable desserts, and now brunch. Maggiano's Little Italy. It's a great place for good friends to gather to share good times and great food. Not only do they have an incredible brunch, lunch, and dinner, they are the perfect choice for a banquet of any size. Come as you are seven days a week. At Maggiano's Little Italy, you get more of everything. Maggiano's is located at North Park Mall in Dallas. We all know air travel can be draining. Let wind transportation make your travel more pleasurable when you're on the ground. Departure or arrival, wind delivers no worry service. It's about time. Time to spare when you're departing and being right there to pick you up when you arrive. We monitor all incoming flights and we're prepared should unexpected flight changes occur. For an individual or multi-flight groups, WIN will make the experience great. Your time and your experience is our passion. Visit GoWIN.com to book. That's G-O-W-Y-N-N-E.com. This is Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. I am Rich Phillips with you every Monday night from 7 to 8 at Ozona Grill and Bar. Next week will be our last show here as the regular season finale is next Saturday against Tulane at 11 a.m. Reminder, it's Super Senior Saturday honoring the seniors, and kids 12 and under will be admitted free for SMU and Tulane next Saturday at 11 a.m. This Saturday at 11 a.m., SMU on the road at Memphis, and it's time to uh, meet the enemy, brought to you by the Cox School of Business, offering the new Fast Track one-year MBA designed to launch your career in just 12 months. Visit coxgrad.com for more information. Memphis... uh, could be on a, a collision course with the only team they've lost to this season, UCF, to play for the conference championship maybe in a few weeks. They are 8-1. and one. They're uh, ranked, I believe it's 18th and 17th in the two polls. And, man, there's a couple of great offenses we're going to be treated to Saturday at 11 a.m. in Memphis. Yeah, you know what? They, uh, of course, Coach Norvell is, is – uh, coach. he actually was uh, – um, when I was the offensive coordinator at Tulsa, he was, he was my wide receiver coach and, and obviously done a great job. Uh, went to, to uh, uh, Pitt when Coach Graham went to Pitt and then followed him from there to Arizona State and um, and then taking the job at Memphis just a year ago and uh, took over a great took over a great program uh, when Coach Fuente left to go to Virginia Tech and uh, did a really good job of recruiting, bringing in some guys and uh, and just picked up where, where they left off and and uh, has got these guys playing well, um, you know, offensively. They're, they're uh, I think they're what, top eight not in the country. And, they are, uh, yeah, eighth in yards and yeah. uh, sixth in scoring. Sixth too. in scoring, eighth in yards. And, you know, and, and so that we, we know that offensively they're very explosive. They're very similar to Central Florida uh, in regards to their speed. Um, they've got a quarterback, Riley Ferguson. It's uh, up for a lot of the awards, the, the, the quarterback award lists. Uh, I mean, he's right there at the top of all of them. He's thrown for almost 3,000 yards and 27 touchdowns and only seven interceptions. Uh, a young man that we actually recruited when we were at Clemson and uh, went to Tennessee and then transferred from Tennessee to Memphis uh, and has done a fa- fabulous job. We played against him last year. Uh, the guy's got a great release, really good poise in the pocket. He's impressive to watch. Um, and, and does a lot of really good things um, when, when the pocket collapses around him. But he's got a great supporting cast around him, too. He's got seven returning starters. They're averaging 42 points a game um, and uh, six, almost seven yards of play. So uh, they, they've got, uh, you know, Anthony Miller um, is uh, one of the Bolitnikoff semifinalists, along with Trey Quinn. Yes, sir. Uh, they've narrowed it to the week of 10, or to this week, they narrowed it to 10. And obviously, Trey Quinn is on that list. Um, and so is Anthony Miller, and, and, and rightfully so. He's got 67 catches for uh, 900 yards and 11 touchdowns. So we've got our hands full defending these guys. Uh, they got Tony Pollard uh, is uh, one of the most dynamic return guys. He is the number one return man in all of college football right now, uh, number one. So uh, uh, really explosive, got a lot of speed. Um, they return four of their five offensive linemen. Uh, so they're going to be a handful. We're going to have to play really well defensively, and uh, we're going to have to uh, be assignment sound and swarm to the football. Um, and they also got a running back that's get closing in on a thousand yards, Daryl Henderson, uh, number eight, and, and uh, again just a, a fast, explosive, and very elusive young man, five nine, two hundred pounds. Defensively, uh, I know that their stats don't don't uh, indicate really kind of their personnel. They're, they're I think they're down 113th in the country in total defense, uh, but but again they've they've played some explosive offenses and and. Uh, uh, they've got uh, six returning starters. They've got 15 takeaways. They're averaging 
uh, given up close to, to 450 yards a game and given up 32 points a game. So, uh, but again, they, they, they play extremely well. They've had a lot, had a lot of injuries um, on the defensive side of the ball this year. But uh, they still got some guys back there. They got uh, a couple of true freshmen that are really impressive to watch. Uh, um, Carter Terrell, uh, a number two a freshman uh, cornerback, um, has done a really, really good job of stepping in from the, from, uh, uh, and replacing one of their corners from a year ago. He's got 54 tackles, four interceptions. So, again, he, he, he's done a really good job. He's got great speed. So I've been very impressed with him. And then their D-line up front, they do a good job moving guys in and out. So we're going to have to play well offensively and, uh, um, you know, and, and, and capitalize on, on uh, the opportunities that you get. This uh, team, kind of like Navy, has been uh, not been great matchups for us the last couple of years. Is, is there something to the theory that's sometimes thrown out about there that uh, a team has another team's number? Well, I don't, I don't believe in that by no means. Um, I really don't. I, I believe it's how you play. It's not who you play. And uh, I've said that from as long as I've been coaching. It, it's how you play. It's how you show up. It's how you prepare. It's not who you play. Uh, now, again, they, they have a lot to do with, uh, um, you know, how they play as well. And, uh, but, but at the same sense, it's, it's all about SMU. It always has been about SMU since I rolled in here on, on December the 1st in 2014. And, uh, and it will be and, and, and until my last day here. It will always be about SMU, and it's how we play and how we prepare and, and how we come out and uh, control what we can control. We cannot control anything that they do. Uh, all we can do is control how we respond. 11 a.m. Saturday morning, SMU plays uh, at Memphis. That game will be televised on ESPN News. I'll have the pregame starting at 1030 on 1310 and 96.7 FM, the ticket. And uh, we're going to wrap things up and get those keys to success coming up next year on Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. With over 7,000 athletes in the greater Dallas area, Special Olympics Texas is dedicated to providing programming for children and adults with intellectual disabilities. By offering year-round training and athletic competition in a variety of Olympic-style sports, the athletes get a chance to develop physical fitness, build friendships, and experience the thrill of friendly competition. SMU Athletics is a proud collegiate partner of Special Olympics Texas. For more information about registering an athlete or signing up to coach or volunteer, visit SOTX.org or call 800-876-5646. For over 15 years, Texans have trusted Firefighting's Finest Moving and Storage to provide professional service for their residential or commercial moving needs by our teams of off-duty firefighters and professional movers. Whether it's packing, moving, or storage, Firefighting's Finest Professional Staff will provide SMU fans with an unparalleled level of customer service. Visit us at firefightermovers.com for more information. Ask about our weekday move special for SMU fans. And remember to use movers you can trust. Maggiano's Little Italy specializes in serving lavish portions of authentic Italian-American cuisine made in their scratch kitchen. Offering homemade pastas, signature salads, prime steaks, fresh fish, memorable desserts, and now brunch. Maggiano's Little Italy. It's a great place for good friends to gather to share good times and great food. Not only do they have an incredible brunch, lunch, and dinner, they are the perfect choice for a banquet of any size. Come as you are seven days a week. At Maggiano's Little Italy, you get more of everything. Maggiano's is located at North Park Mall in Dallas. ESPN's Neil Everett here. This college football season, Nissan's putting you in the driver's seat. Go to NissanHeismanHouse.com, build a customized Titan wrapped in your school's colors, then register for a chance to win it. Enter the Nissan Heisman House sweepstakes. Take on today. Get to Nissan, proud partner of the SMU Mustangs. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited. Ends 12 8 17. Open to residents of USDC 18 and older. Official rules at NissanUSA.com backslash Heisman House sweepstakes. Sponsored by Nissan North America. It's our final segment this week of Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. And it is time to get those keys to success this week. Brought to you by Nissan. A win for your team is a win for you, too. There's nothing quite like it except driving a Nissan. Visit ChooseNissan.com and take on today. Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. Saturday morning, 11 a.m. is the kickoff time for SMU at Memphis. Coach, what are the keys to success for the Mustangs this Saturday? Well, there, there's always several, but really when it comes down to it, especially coming off of last week, it's just you've got to come out and, and be ready to go. We've got to start like we finished uh, and it start like we played in the second half last week. And that, that's really my biggest challenge to our players is we've got to find a way. Find a way to, to, to start this game out and play four solid quarters of football because that's what it's going to take to beat a quality opponent like this. 
Uh, you mentioned it uh, a segment or two ago. I think it was last segment, and we do need to talk about this here. You mentioned the Bolitnikoff semifinalists awards, uh, semifinalist list that was put out this week. And uh, probably at the start of the year, everybody thought Cortland Sutton would be the one showing up on there. Not that Cortland's had a bad year, but, boy, Trey Quinn, great to see him. Uh, on the semifinalist list for the Blitnikoff. Well, it is, and, and we've got so many guys that are so excited for Trey, and, and Cortland being one of them. And, I mean, Cortland's going to get – he's close to 1,000 yards right now and receiving and on track to have an unbelievable year. And uh, you've got – also you've got Trey Quinn. James Prochet is, is uh, going to be close to 1,000 yards as well. But uh, you've got the nation's leading reception guy uh, in Trey Quinn and, and, uh, and, and just surpassed 1,000 yards. He's our conference leader in, in uh, receiving yards and in receptions. And uh, it's just been, you know, fantastic for us this year. But uh, it hasn't been just him. Um, and he would be the first one to tell you. He'd be more than happy to trade that, uh, that semifinalist uh, uh, awards list for, for wins any day. And that's just who he is. But uh, it is a great honor for our program. Uh, it's great for recruiting. Um, and especially knowing that you're going to have a top ten pick in the NFL draft, and he's got, and Trey's got another year coming back, and um, and in court, and Trey and uh, James Prochet's got another year coming back, and so uh, it's really good. So what will happen now? They're, they've narrowed them to ten, and uh, next Monday they will narrow it to three, and uh, you know we fully anticipate Trey Quinn being one of the three, and and we'll be out in Atlanta at the College Football Awards Show on a uh, at sometime in mid uh, mid December. Mm -hmm. Did uh, I know you had high to Trey when he transferred here from LSU, but did you envision him being such the huge focal point of your offense the way it's been this year? Well, I, I felt like that, yes, he, he would be. He would be a great addition to Cortland, and he would take a lot of pressure and stress off of Cortland and, and, uh, and help us in the run game. And it was just it took a few weeks in there to figure out how people were going to play us uh, once Trey started really coming on each and every week. And so uh, I, knew, I knew what this, he was capable of. I've said it last year when he, when he committed to us and came here and set out a year. I said, just remember this name. Um, I said it many times. He's going to be a great football player for us. And here we are um, a year later, and, and uh, he hasn't disappointed any of us. Has a chance for the uh, school record, by the way, for receptions in a single season. I think he's about – 15 away from that with two games to go. He could do that in one week, you know. Yep, he has absolutely. he has done that a few times right. in a week. Hey, real quick, before we finish up here tonight, it was a pretty uh, rugged game on Saturday. We saw a lot of guys coming to the sideline. How's the health of the team? Yeah, we, we've got some guys that uh, were as, as uh, you, know, I, you know, everybody at this point in time in college football has got, uh, you know, bumps and bruises, and we're, we're no different. Um, we'll we'll reassess some injuries this week and see who will be in and who will be out. But uh, but it was, and we knew that was going to be a physical game for us. But uh, hopefully hopefully we'll have uh, the majority of our guys back. Wasn't a good day to be number eleven. Raymond Epps took a huge shot there in the first half, and then uh, Kyron went out twice in the game. Yeah, and uh, you know that was a uh, that, those were two big uh, big injuries to mm -hmm. us, and uh, that, that definitely affected us. But uh, hopefully these guys will be back. We'll, we'll see. I talked to both of them earlier today. They fully anticipate being back. Uh, but we'll see how, how the, the week continues. All right. We hope to see them Saturday. It's an 11 a.m. kick for SMU at Memphis. And it will be on ESPN News and on 1310 and 96.7 FM. The ticket beginning at 1030 with the pregame. And don't forget, next Saturday at home is the home finale, November 25th against Tulane. Super Senior Saturday. Kids 12 and under are free for SMU and Tulane the next Saturday at Gerald J. Ford Stadium. That will do it for this week. We'll have one more show next Monday night from 7 to 8 here at Ozona. We hope to see everyone back here. And thanks for joining us. Coach, thank you for being you. here with us. For Great. Tempo Talk with Chad Morris. Thank you. On the Mustang Sports Network from Learfield, live from Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue, Tempo Talk with Chad Morris has been brought to you by the Lyle School of Engineering, offering master's programs through on-campus and distance education options. Visit lyle.smu.edu. BMW, test drive one at your local Dallas-Fort Worth BMW centers and take advantage of exclusive offers. Ozona Grill and Bar on Greenville Avenue. Find your comfort zone. Credit Union of Texas. Be a part of something unexpected. CUTX.org. Experience more. Also by Ruthie's Rolling Cafe. Voted the best grilled cheese in Texas.
The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Mustang Sports Network.